Yeah, I'm in Glasgow now. Uh, it's actually called Paisley. It's 10 minutes from Glasgow. You typically stay in the UK? Since last 15 years, yes, but I've been recently told by them that I will be relocating soon, so... And who's so, them? I, oh, Joe, I'm still <laughs> at this time, at this phase when I'm, I'm being tested a lot and I'm being uh, taught how to trust myself and trust them. Uh, and it's quite challenging sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, if you ask who, um, I've been told actually once uh, that it was actually Council of Nine and that was why I was exposed to um, webinars so they could then contact me as well. And they even told me, been, because my reaction was what? And they say, well, we don't work so many. And once I also have for a very specific reason, uh, Jesus Christ. And I, I've been recording everything because they told me to record everything. But it's, uh, I think um, I'm ready to just take it as it comes now. Um, I learned to accept it. Uh, I think the only reason why I was struggling with trust was my own uh, issues with uh, self-worth, really, because I believe in them, but I just, I was thinking, why would they contact me, you know? So over the past, over a month, they, it was very intense, uh, but I knew it's going to be intense. Uh, my son was going away for a month to his grandparents, and I literally could feel like I'm standing in the eye of the storm, and that will be a very transformational time for me. It was almost like coming from a form of caterpillar to a butterfly, because there was so much energy moving out. I did a lot of work on a, on a self-love, and... The, the same day my son left, the channeling started. I, they woke me up after three o'clock in the morning. They said, go to the studio and record. It was the voice. And I just start recording. And almost every morning between three and five, they would wake me up. Um, so the recordings that we've done so far, they were basically teachings for me. They've been guiding me. It's nothing for, you know, for like a public. However, however they said for the public, it's going to come when I'm, when I'm definitely ready. Uh, at, the, at the moment, it's still um, a learning process, I would say, like a preparation process. But they told me, uh, because I'm asking a lot of questions, and I have to admit that my mind often goes into chaos mode. Um, so they are telling me what to do, you know, how to calm down and, you know, to not overthink. and. Um, when I was asking them a lot of questions, they've been obviously kindly giving me the answers. Uh, but they said, you really need to tell your story from the age of seven, everything what you remember what happened to you. Um, and a lot of memories start to come back, memories that uh, initially I repressed because no one believed me because that was the 80s, you know. And when I was seven or eight, the first uh, experience for me happened when I was uh, I was a very uh, loving child, you know, and I prayed for everyone in heaven to be healthy. And, and one evening, um, Jesus Christ basically showed up in front of me. But uh, I ran away because I, was, uh, I, I wasn't expecting that, right? But then a lot of things start happening when I was in my youth. For example, I would wake up at night and I was just under my ceiling, you know, circulating. Um, I would wake up and there was like a massive big bubble hanging above me and there were like beings reaching out to me. The problem was I was always uh, reacting with fear because I had no knowledge. I mean, my, whole, my mom's family, they were quite spiritual and they could talk to spirits, but because um, there was no internet and I didn't even have any chance to you know, get some more information. I was just repressing it. And because of the fear, I told them one, uh, once, I, I don't want it anymore. I, I just don't want it anymore. So that stopped. And then everything came back three years ago. I divorced my husband. I changed the house. And I didn't realize that I moved in next to a country park, beautiful country park. And I started walking there every day with my dogs. And one day, they, I could hear this voice, we need you back to your spiritual path. 
And I remember just standing in the middle of the field and I said, but how I don't even know where to start. I don't know anyone, literally anyone who would be like, you know, spiritual. But a calming feeling came to me saying, like, I knew that I would be guided. And obviously the wrong people start moving out from my life. Not the wrong people, the people that weren't maybe um, the right people for me and different people start coming in. I don't want to judge anyone. And one of them was my friend Deborah, who is uh, very connected to angels. So that's how I started, you know, talking to angels. And then one day I was tidying up my studio and I found a yellow note, like a yellow note on my desk saying Dolores Cannon. And I see that it was my writing, but I, I didn't remember writing it. But I googled the woman because I had no clue who she was. And the first YouTube video that came up, I thought, Jesus, she's crazy, you know? She's talking about some waves of volunteers, you know, past life regressions. Um, and the initial reaction was, no, 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 no. Uh, but the same day, I sat down in the evening with the YouTube and I was sitting on a sofa. She was on a YouTube on TV. And suddenly, it was like I was in a tunnel. And she was at one side and I was on the other side and I could download, I was just downloading everything as a truth, you know, it was like, oh my God, finally someone is telling me the truth because since very young age, I was always asking my mom, mom, what's up there? And she would say, what do you mean stars? I said, no, 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 behind the stars, you know, beyond the stars. And, and suddenly Dolores Cannon started giving me those information that I was in search some you know, most of my life. And she started coming to me as a spirit. <laughs> and she, as what? As, well, as a spirit, as a energy. And on three occasions, she told me, hurry up. She just said, hurry up, hurry up. And said, hurry up for what? That was the time when I would still sit on my sofa in the evening watching soaps, you know? My life was very boring and I just got divorced and I didn't really see any future. And she came and I started studying her and and she would come and then she came to me and she said, paint me, paint my portrait. And I said, why would you want me to paint you? You know, you transitioned in 2014, you know, what do I do with your portrait? But she said, no, paint me. And she specifically asked me to set a date and time, which is still on my easel, right, wrote down on my easel in my studio. And I channeled her through the painting and she gave me some information. And uh, she told me to uh, become the practitioner. So I was like, me again, I was like, me, uh, you know, I, I, I won't be good at it. But then <laughs> when I was ready, I, I signed up and I became the practitioner. And then I start, you know, getting more and more and I was hearing those voices like art has a, this has a big meaning in it all because what was happening with my art, um, I was, I would always say to everyone like during exhibitions and show, I never think when I paint, I just go in and I paint those faces. And I would always be inspired by a music, but the music wasn't rather me choosing the music. It was something like I would go to the shop and suddenly I can hear something and I knew this is the song I need to use. And when I finished the painting, I would always use the, the lyrics, partial lyrics of the song to title the painting. And what I noticed uh, that one by one, they created my future, my, my personal life, to a point that I created a human being a year ago and now he manifested in my life and i asked them why is this happening you know and they said first of all obviously everything is a mirror everything is mirror in you and we've been communicating with you through those songs so we can create so we can show you how powerful creator you are so then you can teach others how to create their own realities funny thing was that before I re-entered the spiritual path, my paintings that normally were selling like massively, they stopped selling. And I became, you know, very like frustrated and I quit painting. But on the other hand, I start, you know, this quantum journey. And then I start, uh, you know, attending those webinars and everything starts, you know, falling down. And they told me, well, if, if, if we wouldn't, you would never go towards this path. 
which we wanted you to be on right now. And they say this, this is the time for the paintings to come back kind of in a picture, but they say you need to tell the story, you need to give the fruits to people, the examples of the paintings, and you need to tell your whole kind of story so then you can use it how to teach others how to create their realities not necessarily through art because they said to me you are the medium now you don't need a medium you are the medium now like not medium that channeler but like you know the creator and then um, a few more things happen and you are the first person actually no I, I said it to my friend two days ago but this is so huge for me and it's quite emotional um, because when I start doing a lot of work this past month, I knew I got this window and I knew I need to let go of the past and there was a lot of traumas attached and I'm very proud of myself. Um, but I think what I became, I became kind of like a spiritual, uh, a person who actually, you know, became so spiritual that forgot about the God. You know, we are gods, we are members of God, but somehow I missed this divine element in it all i think i became like i lost the humility yeah i lost the humility so i've been working with coaches and um and one day i when i realized that i forgot about god that the, the part of my life that was always so important i 